Yeah. Do you believe that it's economically literate, not economically illiterate, but literate to believe that uncapped immigration, typically uh, lower skilled and unskilled workers, i.e. excessive supply for fixed demand, will push down the price of labor, push down wages, and that's what we're seeing? Well, the trouble is that the economists who've looked at this have come up with very conflicting views. I, we, common sense would say it would, well, at least hold wages, they wouldn't rise as fast. And that's one of the reasons why employees like, employers like it. And I think we've got to be quite blunt about that. But there are other benefits, of course, that come uh, from having uh, immigrant labor. Uh, the problem is this free movement of labor provision. It was fine when we were a community of nine. It was fine when we were a community of 15. When we made the good decision and the right decision to take in a lot of other countries from Eastern Europe, it became a major issue. And then we have the Prime Minister. I, I know the pressure he was from Angela Merkel in order to do a deal with Turkey. But to say that you are going to... Um, speed up the entry of Turkey into the EU, when we've all known that freedom of movement of labor is one of the reasons why we've stopped and slowed down Turkey's application. It seems to me you're in danger of giving, it's this presentism, this, this uh, pretend, so that uh, Turkish people feel that they soon will be in the European Union. When they discover they're not, I only hope they don't in disillusionment pull out of NATO where I believe they play an extremely important and valuable role. But nobody's saying that everybody would come, but it would certainly, a country of 75 million, would add to the uh, likely numbers that are coming in. And as I say, we've all underestimated it before. And I, don't, I want to see ONS, which I respect, incidentally, given a greater role in this, and the government step right back from it. ONS insisted in the 1970 election that we publish the balance of payments figures to the embarrassment of the then Labour government when I was kicked out of government. Very salutary, very important. I've been kicked out of government twice, in 70 and in 1979. Didn't feel like it at the time, but in retrospect, I think it was a perfectly reasonable decision. This is a lot of this is about, can you kick the buggers out? You can't in many parts of the European Union. In many aspects of European life, it's quite impossible to make a democratic political choice and qualified voting necessary for a single market. I don't deny that. But it does mean you lose an awful lot of votes and sometimes votes on important matters. And incidentally, I think that's what uh, Mr. Bloomberg should be worried about. How much safeguarding is there for the city of London as in the uh, if you remain? Not a lot, in my view. There have been eyeing the city of London for years. I think there will be another move to check it. And all the Prime Minister's got, basically, is you can call, raise this matter in the European Council. No provision for a vote. No automatic right to do so. That was pointed out by the Deputy Chairman of the Bank of England the other day. So be careful. Look at the small print of these uh, commitments of how the EU has not been reformed by the Prime Minister's renegotiation any more than it was reformed by the renegotiation of Harold Wilson and Jim Callaghan. And most of us knew that in 1975, and all of you know it in 19, uh, in, sorry, in 2000 and wherever we are. <laughs> okay, yes.